I'm Susan Katz Miller. My book is Being Both, Embracing Two Religions in One Interfaith Family. I'm also in an interfaith marriage myself. I've raised two interfaith teenagers. And my husband and I made this controversial decision to raise our children with both family religions. There are more and more families doing this now. There are communities in Chicago, New York, and Boston, each of them raising more than 100 children in interfaith education programs designed for interfaith children. Um, and the recent Pew Research study showed that of intermarried Jewish parents, for instance, 25% are raising their children with partly Jewish, partly something else. In other words, with both family religions. And so I saw this as a grassroots movement, and I used my background as a reporter, as a journalist, to also survey hundreds of other people from interfaith families and do many interviews over a 10-year period of research so that I could tell not just my own story, but the stories of many interfaith families who are raising children with both religions. I really, I focused on the children who were raised in these intentional interfaith communities because in the past there was a lot of confusion between families who were doing both and families who were doing nothing. And unfortunately part of the reason for that is that families who tried to do both ended up doing nothing because they didn't have support. They didn't have the support of their own families. They didn't have the support of religious institutions or clergy. And what's really changed is that in these intentional interfaith communities, you now have the support of other families. There are clergy working with these groups. And so children who are educated in both in this intentional way, who are in these classrooms, and each classroom would have, for instance, a Jewish teacher and a Christian teacher, they get this really pretty in-depth education that interfaith kids in previous generations wouldn't have had uh, if the parents were trying to sort of homeschool them in both. Um, so I wanted to focus on these kids who really had a deep and rich interfaith education and find out what happens to them. How do they feel about their education? How do they feel about being part of an interfaith family? And so I worked through those organizations, through those communities, to gather the subjects, both the parents and the children that I interviewed. And I also interviewed the teachers who taught in those programs, who were teaching in those programs, and the clergy who are associated with those programs. So I interviewed rabbis and ministers and a Catholic priest, all of whom are working with families who are part of interfaith family communities, raising kids with both. Um, there's also a later chapter of the book called Interfaith Families Next Wave, that includes Hindu, Muslim, Buddhist, other types of interfaith families because Judaism and Christianity is sort of the model here, partly because that was my own experience, partly because these were the first uh, two communities to really intermarry in great numbers and the first to form these intentional interfaith communities and set up these interfaith education programs. But I see that very much as a model for other types of interfaith combinations coming up. And, of course, each combination has its own set of benefits and its own set of challenges. The, you know, each combination has different areas of overlap and areas of difference. Uh, but there are commonalities. When I meet other interfaith kids, even if they're, say, Hindu and Muslim, we sense that we have something in common. It's really interesting. In that chapter about Next Wave, one of the families that was most interesting to me was a three-generation interfaith family, um, which is like my own because my parents intermarried and now there's my generation and now my children are, are practically grown. Um, but in this family, they had all three Abrahamic religions. There is uh, a mother who was raised Jewish, a father who was raised Catholic, and this is a couple who, in the 60s, really went on a search for the religion that they thought would work best for them as an interfaith couple at a time when there wasn't a lot of support for interfaith marriages. And they, st they, they settled on Sufi Islam. So they became Muslims uh, in the 60s. And their children were born and raised as Muslims. And now one of their sons is married to a Catholic. So I interviewed this 
Catholic wife and the Muslim husband, but his parents were born Jewish and Catholic. And so you have all of these threads weaving through. And people would say, oh, that must be a mess, or they must have all these issues. Well, yeah, there were moments of challenge, but there were also really heartening stories about the benefits that um, the boy felt growing up in a family that had been formed through all three of these religions and the way that he brings that to bear on his own interfaith marriage. Uh, the things that he learned growing up in what had been an interfaith family, which became a conversionary family, uh, and how he brings that to his marriage to his wife. So it was one of the more interesting stories. I frankly didn't know Reza, and I didn't realize how famous he was. He tweeted something about the fact that he and his wife were raising their children with, you know, both religions, many religions. And I saw that, and I just tweeted back at him, oh, can I interview you for my book? And he said, sure. And would you like to talk to my wife? And I said, sure. And this was before Zealot came out. So it was before he kind of went viral with that story. And it was a wonderful encounter because they're both so articulate and had been very thoughtful about what they were doing. And again, for uh, Muslim and Christian intermarriage, this is really cutting edge. There hasn't been that much of it in the U.S. And so, you know, they really had to think about what they were doing. And I think they're raising their children in a very thoughtful way. And so it was wonderful to get to talk to them about that. And it was also great good luck for me when Zealot came out and suddenly everybody wanted to know more about their marriage. And there I have the story in the book. So I think what's really interesting with this pluralism that we have in the United States, this tremendous diversity, is that interfaith families act as a kind of glue between the different religious communities. And we're living often side by side in urban areas and increasingly in suburban and even in rural areas. Um, and the communities don't always understand each other very well. They don't know each other very well. If you have an interfaith family that spans those two communities, they're going to be a bridge. They're going to be glue. Um, they're going to help to translate for each other. Uh, people who live in interfaith families are by nature, by experience, interfaith ambassadors. They are people who can make those translations. And I think this is something that as interfaith children, we kind of step up to that role. Not everybody wants to take it on, but inevitably you're called on to do so because you find yourself with, you know, your cousins on one side and your cousins on the other side having to explain, you know, this is you know, what's going on in the bar mitzvah, or this is what's going on in the confirmation, or, you know, this is what this side of my family does on an Eid or at Diwali. Uh, so we take on this role, and if we raise our children to see that as a privilege, as, as something that they have unique skills, that we encourage them to contribute to the world, then the existence of these interfaith families is going to help to reduce misunderstanding and the toll of religious violence. And I really believe that. One of the things that I'm very pleased about is that this book contains the voices of so many adult interfaith children. And up until now, most of what's been written about interfaith marriage has been written by either clergy or possibly people who are intermarried. But it's really time for those who were born and raised in interfaith families to step up and speak out and talk about our experiences. And I'm hoping there's going to be a lot more of that now. I'm hoping this is going to be the beginning of a new genre that we're going to see all of these stories being told.